Robert Cochran, a successful farmer, was the most well-known fossil pioneer in the Peace Region. His farm near the Cluskin Hills provided him with easy access to the unique badlands terrain of the area. Robert Cochran's grandson, Bob Cochran, who now lives on the family farm, shared some stories about his grandfather. Hello. My name is Bob Cochran. I've lived here all my life, 60 years. Uh, grandson of Robert Cochran. He spent 30 years in doing it, so he was able to, in that time, put together quite a collection. And also, a lot of people donated uh, different pieces to him, too. Mr. Cochran's extensive collection was displayed in several fossil gardens in the family farmyard. Additional artifacts were sorted and stored in a garage. Robert Cochran often visited with George Robinson, another famous fossil pioneer from the Sexsmith area, comparing notes and fossil artifacts. Oh, they were always exchanging ideas and different pieces that they weren't quite sure what it was. They would converse over, over that quite a lot. And Mr. Robinson was uh, the one that catalogued Granddad's collection for the museum in Grand Prairie. So. Robert Cochran was a key figure in the success of the Cleskin Hills Geological Society picnics and the many speakers who came to the area. His work on the Cleskin Hill site was instrumental in this unique area being preserved as a park for future generations to enjoy. Oh yeah, he was instrumental in uh, establishing uh, the Cleskin Hill Park, actually. And we've got some pictures of the early days in uh, late 50s when people would go there to the picnic and there would probably be 500 people there or more. Bob Cochran remembers fossil collecting trips with his grandfather. Just, just excitement and, and uh, probably in the back of your mind you were thinking about the hard pack it would be to get it home. And, well, it was just a straight old gunny sack and bulwark and I don't remember him having a pack board. I, I just remember him having a sack over his back and hanging on to it with his hand. And, yeah, it would be in the fall, mainly when the rivers were low. That's when it would be the easiest to find some new discoveries from. He'd go back the same places year after year, and there'd always be new stuff from, from the high water in the spring. But there would be times that he would find something quite big, and he'd go there in the winter time with a sleigh and drag it out in the snow with snowshoes and that sort of thing. And nowadays it would be easy to do with a snowmobile, but back then there wasn't such a thing. Well, some of them were just washed out of the river beds, and it was best to go there after the spring high water had eroded the banks, and then you'd mainly find them right in the bottom of the creek beds when the low water came in the fall. That was the best time to go, because there was new, new fossil finds every year, it seemed. Well, I think he had a real genuine interest in geology and how the earth was formed and what inhabited the earth at that time and been able to find the remains of some of the creatures. And this particular book was one of which Granddad used in his teachings. He, the kids have signed their names from Beaver Lodge. There's a couple of different places where they signed their names. And a lot of these people are still in the Beaver Lodge area. This was done in 1950. But anyway, some fossils are found as molds or casts. In these instances, the original organism has decayed or dissolved, leaving a hollow impression in the sediment or the rock in which it was entombed. The hollow impression is a mold. If that mold becomes filled with sand or mud, which eventually solidifies to form stone, a cast is produced, a fossil which preserves the external form. These are the uh, concretions that we talked about in the house. And it's interesting the sound they make when you just know that that was made from something other than uh, nature, there had to be a form or a mold to, to form that. And uh, this one here also has 
a unique noise. 